Hey everybody, it's Matt Powers. I'm an author, educator, citizen scientist, and family guy. And I teach people all over the world how to live more regeneratively and how to develop regenerative soil. So today I wanna to ask you a question. How do you know your compost is actually gonna benefit your plants and soil? How do you know that your IMO or, or, or any of it, even the stuff you buy you know, in a store, how do you know what they're saying on the label is, is real? Are you testing your compost? And, and are, are you testing it be right before you apply it? What are the ways that you're testing? Like multiple ways, what are the ways? Okay, so these are the kind of things I want you to think about. I used to, you know, wait until things looked right, smelled right. I never tasted my compost. Don't taste your compost, please. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I actually don't want people to like even deeply smell their compost or even inhale compost fumes when it's hot and it's, it's gassing off because there's microbes riding that heat and moisture. I never, as I did that, you know, like that kind of faith-based practice, right? Um, early organic farming, you know, I was part of that, like doing that home gardening thing. It was never perfectly consistent. I did little bits of everything. I tried to incorporate everything that I discovered. I loved learning. I loved trying things out and experimenting. And nothing was perfectly consistent like a magic bullet because I was focused on the methods, not the principles at work. And I was focused on certain teachers rather than a multiplicity of teachers and understanding the principles that, go, that, that all of them are relying upon to get their success. And so I, you know, I would have variable success, you know, I have different rates of success. And then everyone, every once in a while, and there, sometimes there'd be this area or, or this spot or, or this plant, something would go wrong. And I wouldn't know why. And it would raise a question. It'd be like, well, why is this like this? Why is that like that? And none of the teachings that I, I, I was learning from, whether natural farming or biological farming, um, organic agriculture, none of them had the solutions to what I was looking at and looking for. And maybe you feel that same way, right? Maybe, I mean, can you relate to that? Do you, do you see things that sometimes you're like, I, everything else loves this, why? What's the caveat here? And, you know, I mean, maybe you're like me, you've been doing this for over 10 years and, and you've seen that, or maybe you're just starting out and you want to avoid missteps. But I've worked with in soils all over the Western and Midwest and now Southern uh, parts of, of America in all these different climates, all these different soil types. And the, I've been in subtropical, I've been in, you know, the cold, snowy, temperate, I've tested soil and compost from all over North America and looked at it at the microbiological level, understanding it systemically and from a mineral perspective as well. And so there are patterns, there are indicators, there are things that specific biology and types of biology that can give us confidence on whether that bag compost is safe to use in your garden, whether this, you know, in this bio, bio fertilizer that you bought is legitimate. Like it's, it, does it have anything really in there? Is that what, it, is the label correct? You know, those kinds of things. We can easily fool ourselves in this space unless we test. If we don't test, we don't know, right? If you don't look both ways going down the street, you might get hit by a car, right? It's the same thing with all things in life. If you don't look, you don't see it. So why does this matter, right? I mean, th that sounds all great, but do you have a working example? I mean, what happens in real life? Uh, well, let's, let, let's go back in, into our collective memory, right? Things that have happened to me, things that have happened to you, uh, things that have happened to neighbors. You remember that person who put hot manure on their garden, maybe burned it, or had like crazy vegetative growth? And there was lots of corn, tall, giant, vigorous corn, no ears. Rampant tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, no fruits. And it was all vegetative growth. Do you know this? This happened to me. Second year gardening, 
uh, my father-in-law was like, we need to add compost. He brought in bull manure, all this bull manure. He worked it in and all these like weedy grasses grew and everything grew really big that I planted and fought the weeds, but it all, none of it produced seed. Everything got eaten, got nailed by pests. We had some fungal damage. It was textbook from my perspective now. Uh, but I, but at the time I was just like, what's happening? I thought it was good at gardening, you know? <laughs> and, and you might've experienced that early on, early days of the gardening, but then you, and then you've learned how to smell, how to look at compost, right? But then even then you've got that variable success. You've got those things that don't make sense, or you're trying to copy what you saw someone do on the internet and just just mime doing what they're doing and it, their recipes and their methods and it doesn't work. And you're like, how, how is this not working for me? I mean, I see you do it. I see it working. There's, there, there's patterning. There's a principle at work. There's something going on that is part of nature, part of the biology or part of, or, or missing those things. Right. And so we need to diagnose it from that perspective in order to fix it. So, so this is something that I've dealt with. This is something that you've probably dealt with. Um, and many people, when they start out, they also buy things. They, I, I, I've been buying the bad compost lately to test it and compare it to good compost. And it's pretty dramatic. Um, the commercial compost that's bagged, you know, you go into the stores, you get the happy frog, you get the ground up soil, you get all the nature's way, all those kinds of things. There's no protozoa. And there's no nematodes. So if you've seen anything that I've put out, all the free stuff that I've put out over the years, you know there's no soil food web cycling happening. The nutrient cycles that pass through the biology are stopping with the bacteria. And the bacteria will just keep promoting. They're like, I'm full. Now I'm just going to, you know, and then they, they divide, right? Like oh, they are creating more of themselves rather than releasing and so, and they do selectively release biostimulants and triggering things to plants that's true but the nutrients that they're taking up they don't release unless it's rhizophagy that they're being taken up in you need and especially if it's compost that you're paying for you need the nematodes and the protozoa to cycle it otherwise that's not ideal compost and that should tell you a few different things that'll tell you that that compost wasn't properly managed It'll tell you that compost got too hot. It'll tell you that that compost um, is gassed off of the nutrition that you're des you desire, and the microbes need to um, keep going. So there's no cycling, and then you'll notice like there's a lot of hyphae. It's really thin. It's really clear. You're looking at actinobacteria, most likely streptomyces. And while that's an endophyte, when it's dominant it acts like all actinobacteria and pushes out the fungi because it occupies this. It looks like fungi, right? It's hyphal. It occupies the same space except in the alkaline. So they're alkaline and oxidized and they entrench and they'll support everything that makes that happen. And so your soils won't move out of that alkaline space. If you... <laughs> developed your soil and you want more acidic, more neutral, um, more fungal soils, and you add this actin actinobacterial dominant compost, you're going to set yourself back. And then like pH your compost because all the hot compost, right? It's going to be mostly above pH seven. Okay. And so that comes to my, 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 my third point here is that if you're not doing multiple tests, you're going in blind. So uh, I mentioned pH. Not just, so not just the microscope, right? We're not just verifying that there's all these different layers which are easily to, uh, e easily identifiable, but you pH testing, right? Because you know pH eight, pH nine, you've got lockout. You've got nutrient mineral lockout at that pH. So you're amending with that, you're locking things up and you're, you're putting the brakes on the nutrition of the plant. And some people, 
there's like there, there there's chemical ad philosophies around that where they want to stop the growth and like slow things down lock things up let the plant dry down senesce and then come and harvest whoa we want things to be the most natural and most nutritious right and so that's on a different timetable and you can speed it up with microbiology and all the coherence and all that but this is this is something to be careful with and most people have no idea about this and so they're locking out their soil and so it's high nitrate vegetative growth locking out of other minerals you see the dangers um and so uh, and then all you know another test just Two minutes of your time you can take a, a test tube uh, you can shake it up and then you can let it settle and then um, you can see I don't know if that'll I don't know if this will work but my point is 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 that here it'll get back to me <laughs> um, is that you want to do this shake test and then analyze how much sand is actually in your compost because the, the compost in the, in the stores is most of it's just bags of sand and uh, like 80 to 90 percent sand so that's a simple test and then if you have the, like black soot in there and the turbidity is high they went too hot and you you can guess from there that they're going to be low in nitrogen and phosphorus um, and, and the organic matter is going to be low too. So the functionality of that compost is, is pretty much nil. You don't want to be adding it to the soil because it's just going to set off your pH the wrong direction, give you the wrong biology. And then it's like sand and soot. So there's actually no battery holding capacity, which is what organic matter promises when you bring it in. So, um, that's a false promise. These bad comp bagged composts. So, well, how do we make them better by testing it showing them the tests so they're like oh my gosh we can't get away with this any longer we have to raise the bar we have to do better and then everyone you know gets gets better quality compost so citizen science citizen testing understanding what these things are is so key so to that end i am doing a soil biology primer later this week I hope that you join us. And I have a whole series called Discover Soil Microscopy that I want to share with you. We're going to have live webinars, but also replays. So you can't join us live. You can join us on the replay. Register at the link down below and join us. It's going to be amazing. We're going to cover who's who of biology. We're going to cover how to choose and which microscope to choose. And we're going to also go through the good and the bad, looking at them so that you can really see how easy this is to compare, how easy this is to just immediately know when under the microscope very quickly, the, like what kind of soil you're dealing with. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. This is stuff I've never shared online. This is stuff I've never even shared in a course. So join us in Discover Soil Microscopy. I'm Matt Powers, I'll be your host. I'll be guiding you through this journey together. It's a free four part webinar series over the next two weeks. This is exclusive, it's not anywhere else. I've never shared this information before, so you don't wanna miss it. Thank you so much for being part of my community. I'm Matt Powers, grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'll see you inside, click the link. <laughs>